What is going on guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson number 10 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the number data type. If you enjoy the content and find it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 10. Wow, number 10, we're into double digits now. Well done on coming this far and I hope you've been getting a ton of value. So in this lesson then, let's learn all about the number data type. So as mentioned a few lessons back, unlike some other languages, JavaScript has only one kind of numerical data type, simply called number. Other languages might use int, which is short for integer, for whole numbers, and float for decimal numbers. But in JavaScript, the number data type can handle both. For example, we could say let num be assigned the value of 3. And we can also say let new num be assigned the value of 3.16. And now, let's use the built-in type of operator to identify the data type of these variables. So down here, I'm going to say console.log, let's say type of, space, and then the name of our variable, which was num. And then on a new line, we'll say type of new num. Let's save this and see what we get in the console. Okay, so the console has returned number for both of them. So as you can see, the number data type can handle both whole numbers and decimal numbers. Now we can also use scientific notation when writing numbers. This is basically a shorthand method of writing very small or very large numbers. So let's say we wanted to write the number 1 million. We could write it out like this. Let's say let mil be assigned the value of 1 with 6 zeros. But writing it out like this is slightly long-winded. Let's use scientific notation to initialize this variable a lot faster. So instead down here I'm going to say, in fact let's just use this again. I'm going to simply say 1 e6. And if we console log this, as you can see, the console returns 1 million. That's 1 with 6 zeros. Now, what is this here? Well, the E stands for exponent, and we're basically expressing numbers in terms of exponents of 10. So the calculation here that's happening behind the scenes is, let's put this in a comment. So this is basically 1 multiplied by 10 to the power or exponentiation of 6 is equal to one million. Let's take a look at some of the examples of using scientific notation and for these examples let's just use the console directly. So in here in the console I'm going to say 5 e 4 and as you can see that returns 50,000. That's 5 with 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. And just to show you again this is basically the same thing as saying 5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4. As you can see we get the same value. Now for smaller numbers, we can do the same thing, making sure to add the minus symbol after the e. So for example, let's just put this in a variable. So here I'm going to say, let small num be assigned the value of 1 e minus 6. So now let's console log this and see what we get. Let's save this. And now in the console, we get 0 0.000001. And in total here we have six zeros, which is what we specified up here. So for example, if we just wanted to say 0 0.01, then we can just change this to 2. And now we get 0 0.01. So that's basically how to use scientific notation on numbers in JavaScript. Now before we move on, we need to quickly refresh what we mean by methods and properties. Remember we said that there are two main types of data in JavaScript, primitives and objects. You should remember these from our data types lesson. Objects have methods and properties. A method does something and a property is something. So methods are basically blocks of code that perform an action. They do something, whereas properties are values. They are something. Now, you might be asking why do we need to know all this now if only objects have methods and properties? After all, numbers aren't objects, they're primitives. And so they don't have methods or properties. They're just a single value. So why do we need to know all this now? Well, first of all, JavaScript has built-in objects, also called global objects, such as date and math, and we can access these and do some really cool things. We'll learn more about these in future lessons. But JavaScript also has some other built-in objects. Now, I want you to really pay attention here. Primitives, so numbers, strings, and booleans, whilst not objects themselves, each have a built-in object counterpart. So, for example, strings have the string object that they can access. Numbers have the number object that they can access. And JavaScript is smart enough to know that when we create a number, it's a number. When we create a string, it's a string. So numbers automatically have access to a built-in global object called number with a capital N. We can use this number object to access number methods. And it's the same thing for strings and the string object. Now, these built-in corresponding objects have two main purposes. Number one, to store special properties. And number two, to provide functionality in the form of methods. We'll take a look at the properties and methods on the number object in the next lesson. 
To be clear, numbers can't access the string object and strings can't access the number object. Attempting to do so will cause an error. So for example, let's take our number here. So we've got number three and let's reassign this. So we can say num, we assign the value of num. And then here I'm gonna use a string method. So we can say num dot, and the string method I'm going to use, which we're going to look at in a future lesson, is gonna be two upper case. And if we just log this to the console, here the console throws an error. It says num dot two upper case is not a function. So JavaScript recognizes that this is a number. And since it's a number, it only has access to number methods, not string methods. When we access one of these methods using our primitive variable, the variable is temporarily wrapped or boxed into the built-in object. As soon as the method has been called, JavaScript turns it back into a primitive. So if I say let score be assigned the value of new number, make sure we write a number with a capital N. And then in parentheses here, I'm gonna say the number 100. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new number object, okay, for our score variable. And now if we look at the data type for score, so I'm gonna say console.log type of to find the data type, and then the name of our variable, which is score. If we save this, the console returns object. So what's happened here is our score variable has been temporarily wrapped or boxed into the new number object. And so now our score variable has access to a number of different number methods. We'll be looking at number methods in detail in the next lesson. Now remember, this is what happens in the background. There's really no need to create it with the new keyword as an object, because whenever we access object methods, JavaScript will do this for us in the background. So for example, let's take new num and let's say new num and then I'm going to say dot and here you can see we have methods available to us and in here it says method number. So this is a method on the number object. We have access to all of these even though we haven't explicitly said new num equals new number. So when we access one of these, JavaScript basically does this in the background for us. So guys, that's all about the number data type. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at number methods. Now, I know that might have been a bit confusing, but if you just think about it like this, any number that we create automatically has access to number methods. Any strings that we create have access to string methods. Okay, so let's summarize. The number data type is a primitive. Primitives, although not objects themselves, do have access to built-in object counterparts, the number object for numbers, string for strings. We can use these methods on our primitive values to perform some useful actions. And finally, we should always create primitive values as primitives. Let's just comment this out. There's no real need to use the new keyword. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. Okay, so for task one, I want you to declare and initialize a variable with the value of 100,000 and then log this to the console. Keep in mind scientific notation here and how we can use it to write out 100,000. For task number two, in the console, identify the data type of the variable. So this is the variable from task number one. And then finally for task number three, I want you to create a float data type and log this type to the console. So go ahead and try these out. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one then, I wanted you to declare and initialize a variable with the value of 100,000. So here I'm gonna say, let, let's call this num, be assigned the value of, we could say 100,000, but of course a quicker way that we learned was to simply say one E five, because we want one and then one, two, three, four, five zeros. So let's go ahead and console lock this. And sure enough, the console returns 100,000. For task number two, I wanted you to console log the data type of this variable. So over here, I'm gonna say type of in front of our variable, go ahead and save this, and the console returns number because this is a number data type. And then finally, for task number three, I wanted you to create a float data type and log this to the console. Now, this of course was a trick question. Um, there is no float data type. Remember, the number data type can handle both floats as well as whole numbers. JavaScript's number data type can handle both. Hopefully you weren't caught out by that one. In the next lesson guys, we're going to be looking at the various number methods that we can access. So be sure to tune in, don't forget to comment, share, like and subscribe down below and I'll see you on the next one.